Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome to another video. This is the second part of the conversation with Harshad, who's a master's student at George Mason University studying data analytics. If you haven't watched the first part, you should definitely go and check it out. In that we talk about the life and cost of living and visa and GRE score and all of that. So if you want to know those details, definitely go check out the first part. I will leave the link in the description. But in this video, we're going to focus on what is the coursework look like? What are the different assignments, core courses, elective courses? What do you learn in data analytics and professors and a lot of fun details of the coursework of data analytics. I hope you enjoy this conversation. Harshad, if you're watching this, thank you so much for doing this. Also, I just want to express all the gratitude and love and you know how grateful I am for all the the comments and like and share, sharing my videos it means a lot to me it encourages me to make more valuable content for you if you can like and subscribe to this channel that'll be awesome i will now let you enjoy the conversation uh, let's talk about uh, coursework uh, your coursework is it masters of science in data analytics or is, is it masters in data analytics it's masters of science in data analytics engineering so as the coursework, we are supposed to have five mandatory courses and five electives from there. I told you there are a lot of concentrations. You can select from anywhere you want. There are people who do not come in as open concentration. For example, people get in admits for data analytics, business analytics concentration, wherein they are supposed to take courses only from graduate school of business, which is mainly data mining for business analytics, fraud examination, marketing analytics, etc. Whereas if you are an open concentration person, you are allowed to take courses from Graduate School of Business as well as all the other backgrounds. So it's always suggested that you take open open um, background, open concentration. Which is so, uh, Masters of Science in Data Analytics. Correct. Um, so my coursework looked like the five core courses that I had. One of them is um, Operation Research, which is basically Excel for analytics using MS Excel. Even though it's, even though it's something which people think that it's it's, it's Microsoft Office Excel. It's probably the best thing you'll ever you'll ever know. The best thing you can ever 100%, learn. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. And the next course that I have is um, computer science, data mining, principles of data mining. This is basically NoSQL and MySQL combined. This gives you a basis of how you are actually going going ahead and doing your um, you know you are shifting yourself from pure SQL to a little advanced SQL when you are not just you're not just querying and not just adding and selecting stuff into your database and you're doing something which is really more advanced. Next up here. Of that, uh, just just uh, curious because I'm, I want to understand what what's an example of when you say it's not purely selecting and adding and inserting CRUD operation. You're not doing CRUD operation anymore, but for, what's an example of that? Right. So for example, we started that course with learning um, probably querying using subqueries. For example, Let's assume you have two different tables. You have, you have, we have two different tables. We are supposed to select something which is common in these two tables and just display what the result is. That is how we started. And then we migrated to NoSQL, wherein we were learning more about MongoDB, etc. And we ended the course up by learning a tool named Weka, which is a data mining tool. So that's how it actually progressed from having just like, so the first or the second class were actually when I learned about SQL. And then we actually migrated to NoSQL and we started doing that. What's the difference between SQL and no SQL? Just curious. So, yeah, so basically relational schema and something which is not relational non-relational schema is the whole difference between SQL and my SQL, uh, SQL and no SQL. So um, SQL is our own MySQL, uh, which is Oracle, etc. No SQL would be MongoDB, etc., which is really popular these days, considering a lot of companies are trying to use it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's one scale which actually is something which a data analyst would really want to have on his resume. So yeah, not as a not as an academic background, but you would like to learn it when you are actually trying to work on it. So yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Um, uh, now, and you were continuing. So two, you talked about right. two courses. Two of the courses are done. So the third one was statistics for visualization. This is one of the courses which is, I think, a big eye opener for people who want to understand if they want to actually do data analytics and data visualization like we talked before um, when we were actually chatting about how and what I'm doing yeah. 
there are people who actually choose to do data visualization as a career after they have done data analytics and i'll come back come back to that and why so data visualization for analytics this course was purely based in r it's a really new language because in india we have never used it we had never seen it yeah um r is something which is a really academic based visualization tool which which is like python but it's a little different because it has own like it, its own libraries for maybe better visualizations etc it was a really fun course the course as a whole because it's a new language you get to learn more etc it's it's really cool and that course will give you more background about why you need to learn visualization in data analytics because you know you present something in front of somebody which is just a piece of paper with some data they'll probably read it and be like fascinated about it but if you give them a visual they will be able to understand what you're saying mm. that, that provides a lot of good um, insight about what you're saying because you know like they say eyes are more receptive to images than they are to text they also say uh, image speaks uh, like uh, how it works right exactly so that's how, that's that's the whole difference in the deal breaker between data visualization and data analytics and uh, the 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 next academic course that i had was so before before we talk about that uh yeah. why do you need programming language when you're just analyzing data this is a lot of question i get uh, right so so here here here's the whole deal about it so you can actually just have analysis of data like a summary in probably excel or even even for that matter you can do it by your naked fingers so you don't need to actually be knowing anything you just need to be selecting rows and you can just have statistics why the programming language actually came in so python r sql etc these are here to give you deeper insights about what you are analyzing for example you will be able to get in the summary in python and r but it's just the most basic thing you can get out of them python will probably give you so much more as in when you delve more into analytics with python for example you learn that python has a lot of libraries python is basically a programming language which is really powerful but primarily based because of its libraries we have to know for a fact that python's libraries are really powerful in doing anything and everything you would want to for example matplotlib numpy etc these can actually do all statistics functions you want mm -hmm. and you have to know that why programming language actually was needed to do this is because you wanted people always wanted to delve more into data so for example knowledge extraction is just one aspect of data we have to know that when we want to actually explore more we want more details out of it so now we are talking about just actually having meaningful um, meaningful things coming out of data whereas people actually need the need to predict something using data which could not have been just done by you know using excel etc or anything like that so we need to know that there is something which is different in programming languages which allows us to you know get more from data than you will regularly do so that's what my next course actually taught me the next course was um ait 580 which was um introduction to big data it's not really what the name suggests it's a it's an amalgam of python r mysql together and it just gives you background about what your entire course is going to be Mm -hmm. here is where you actually delve a lot into python the whole i think 8 weeks of the semester were doing that and that's when you realize that okay we know why python is needed it's not something we could have done easily just by using another analytical tool and yeah so the rest, then the rest of the 8 weeks are r plus mysql plus a little bit of some more tools yeah so yeah that was one of my other courses which actually led to me actually doing things in python and learning python more because we all know for a fact how much we've learned python during our undergraduate we actually we, we were actually focused more on you know clearing our exams and not really learning anything yeah yeah so yeah so that was that's 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 my fourth course and the last course is actually something which you cannot take until the four courses are completed this is the data analytics project mm. this is a this is a semester long project in a group of maximum six people where you are supposed to be taking up a topic which is presented by the department 
and completing a course on it. This can be outside college. There are company sponsored projects also. And these can be projects which are by professors. So this is something you can take in the penultimate or ultimate semester of your master's degree. I'm going to take it in the last semester. So that's how you I'm going to end it. Like I'm going to take one core course and end it here. Yeah. Or what, do you have plans for your electives? So like, or where, which one are you going to focus on? Or are you going to spread it out into different? Yeah. So I'm actually done with four of my electives already. Nice. So I'm not. I'm done with three of my electives, and I have one more lined up for the next semester. So the electives that I have are really widespread. Um, I have taken two from the Graduate School of Business. One of them being data mining for business intelligence. One of them being fraud examination for business analytics. I had taken database management essentials and advanced this semester, and there's another one that I'm taking next semester, which is information, data, and visualization again which delves deeper into Python plus visualization. Like I told you, I had already done R plus visualization, but this is something which I'm going to do again, but in Python. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. I love, uh, I've, I've never talked to anybody so, so much detail about the course, work. but it also shows me that you're so passionate about your coursework and about the topic itself of data analytics. It shows that you, you really love it. And you can like, you know, uh, ke bhi pucha to, you can like, you know, speak about it. It's, yeah, it's, I would like to, I like yeah. to like tell people that there are a lot of things that you can do apart from just development. Because there are a lot of people who are under the impression that only developers are the whole firm, whole and soul of a particular company. There are a lot of things which, ex which people can explore. So, might yeah. as well explore. Yep. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. <clears throat> Another question is, uh, how is professors over there? Yeah, so the one good thing again about Mason is you you have multiple professors for each course. You have to, you can select, you can check on rate my professors. Like this was something I did for the first semester. And then there are always seniors who will always help you with telling you which course, which professor, because they have already done that course. And most of the courses here are, um, you know, dominated by um American professors, so they are really, really experienced and good with what they know. For example, my big data professor was, he's hes actually really old. He's, he has like 25, exper 25 years experience in Oracle. He's been a, he's, he's a fantastic professor. He, he taught us so much, not just from the academic point of view. He told us how this would be used in industry, which was really cool. Yeah. And yeah, so professors are really good. Some of them like everywhere there are some professors which you will have to probably be very you know very you to work towards very yeah, very some will be strict and some will be will go above and beyond and will be right. friendly so make sure that you you earn it through them you will not be able to just get through so you have yeah. to make sure that you actually pay attention to their courses pay attention to the classes etc so yeah yeah uh, how do you like the assignments uh, because assignments in india you know <laughs> <laughs> the assignments here so the first thing here is the assignments here are so there is there's going to be so for example a database assignment will not be the first assignment and the second assignment will be related so if you missed one yeah the professor will make sure that you miss something in the in all the assignments which is not very advantageous to you because the number of points you lose you just get your grade lower that's that's yeah. that's what happens to you yeah. so the assignments are different but there are things which you have to do in that week and there's a reason behind it because they themselves have taught that in the same week this mm -hmm. means that you keep your mind into that topic for that week so that you can solve the problem for that week and move ahead in the course so basically you implement what you've learned that week and then you move ahead which is very unlike us we learned the whole semester and then yeah. last five days we study and then the five days we study and then we give the examination and then what course, why course, we don't know why I did, we did that. Which is yeah. not the case here with undergraduate students as well. They also study all the time. Yep, yep, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, 100%. Would you recommend students to come to George Mason University? Come, absolutely. I mean, for people who are actually looking to be on the East Coast and there are people who are actually looking for a... For example, I'd recommend it to people who are actually looking for data analytics plus they want their options to be really open. Like I said, I really like the coursework. It doesn't limit us. It allows us to take a lot of courses and plus our academic director 
is is open to your inputs. He's he's okay with you taking calls from anywhere. You just need to inform him, which is something which is really great. So what 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 career fields can you get into from the from the flexibility you just said? Right. So for example, you can be a purely commerce based, for example, financial analyst, etc. If you actually end up taking a finance financial engineering. um concentration which is something which includes courses which will teach you more about how analytics is important in finance which is something which is very inquisitive right. other than that there is business analytics which will lead you to a business analyst there is um, applied predictive analytics which which is actually to make you a data scientist the pure the pure um the pure courses that are there are all operation research and um, system system operations these will give you more about statistics it's it's absolutely a lot of mathematics people who are who, who are really good at mathematics teaching you stuff to do teaching you to stuff which you have to do in r but mathematics mm. so that's how you can go in um there is another which is applied information technology concentration wherein you can take courses which allow you to get deep delve uh, you you can go in deep and you know learn more about databases and how advanced they can get so these are the different kinds of things you can get into once you select your concentration plus the whole deal here is people like me who have open concentration you so my my whole deal behind open concentration was i wanted to know beforehand before i actually you know graduate or even apply for internships that whatever i'm going to do i should like it because you know let's assume that i have taken up applied predictive analytics and i come to know that i really don't know if i can do five courses worth heavy mathematics and things which are going to be data science pertaining only and not just analytics which i really like so that was the whole reason why i actually went ahead and explored that point that part and i intended up liking it so i have taken up over again so that's that's how it actually works you need to yeah. understand what you will like and then go ahead and do to choose the courses so That's awesome, man. I think this is uh, so good. Like, uh, I, you know, I I planned that this video is going to be twenty minutes, but we went overboard. Uh, it's forty minutes now already. But so much value in this one. Like, I I think uh, there's a lot of value. People who actually really interested and watch it through and try to understand what we talk through, they'll get a very good value out of this. Is there anything you feel uh, any advice or any tips or words of wisdom? so my word of wisdom would be there's one thing which you need to know absolutely so there is nobody who has clarity of what they want to do until you do it mm. you know there are a lot of people i know who are software developers but they are not happy what they are doing with what they are doing you need to understand that do something which will give you happiness you know for so i'm not a person who's really academically super strong i'm not a 340 on 340 in gri another i am from am i from harvard but all i am saying is i am happy with what i am doing um and i really derive pleasure of out of looking at data and probably just extracting what i can out of it which is something i really like so i would go at so all i am saying is explore your verticals before deciding what you want to do plus make sure that you do not take a hasty decision just because everybody else is taking it because there is a lot of difference between what you would want to do and what they would want to do yeah so yeah Yeah, do what makes you happy. <laughs> also, there it says over there. Uh, oh, uh, love what you do. Please, thank you. You forgot to tell to watch my videos. <laughs> okay, I have been watching it. You should watch it. Like, share, subscribe, and press the bell icon. Please, thank you. <laughs> I'll send you the money since. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, you know how we end the video, right? Uh, until our next one. Keep smiling, keep hustling. Subscribe to Uni. <laughs> <laughs>